Eh, I'm, I don't really like that song very much. Actually, I was just trying to keep things subtle because of what's ahead. Hey guys, this is the Ekron Writer here. Welcome you to another OBS project. And this one happens to be a very crucial event in my F-Zero timeline. Because as you can see in the cover art, Rick is actually planning on marrying my OC, Tinsel Steelus. I am so excited about this. So, this was a very hard chapter, very hard story to make, as well as a soundtrack, a very hard soundtrack to make, because there weren't a lot of options. So, anyway, this is to be married and loved, which actually takes place in October of 2577, which is after all of my F-Zero fix. So this happens to be the latest one in my F-Zero fanfic series. So let's get this thing going. Alright, here we are, lap one, to be married and loved. This was a project I wanted Barry Watterson to do, but it was entirely up to me. I often don't ask people to do requests since they can be unreliable, but this was worth it. On October 9th, 2577, this would be the day when Rick Wheeler and Tinsel Steelis will finally tie the knot. Actually, this is the second anniversary of the day since they first met, when Rick was desperate to save kids from terminal illness and retrieve medicine, that was stolen by space pirates led by Samurai Goro. Even better is the fact that the fourth episode was released on the Fox Box on October 9, 2004, the first episode I had seen, hence the events of the Samurai Returns. And after a couple years, they're finally ready to be married and loved. So here's their story. Actually, here's a flashback scene. It was at the old queenly course of Port Town on Valentine's Day when Rick popped the question to his beloved Tinsel Steelis. He knew Twilight was the perfect time to do so, as she's usually found stargazing and taking in its blissful scenery there. He finally knelt down to her and whispered his words of appreciation. She was completely stunned. You've always been there for me, as I've been for you. I'm grateful I was able to meet a kindred friend. Ever since I was lamenting over Haruka, you were always supportive, and you've saved my life numerous times. When Zoda and Deathborn were defeated, and when Miss Killer was gone, Haruka was finally able to find peace. It's what she'd always wanted over the past 150 years, and she and I would never have found it if it wasn't for you. And so I decided to pass on a part of her love to you. Rick took out the ring and held it up. I am now glad our lives will finally be completed. And all I have is you to thank for. Her eyes blurred from his heartfelt gesture and words. Tinsel Steelis, will you marry me? She gazed onto the ring for a few more minutes. She could have sworn her body was trembling deep inside. She slowly lowered herself until she was the same height as him. Her voice quivered as she spoke with a huge grin. Yes, Rick. I will marry you. Even his smile grew wider while he slid the sacred century and a half jewel onto her finger. The touch was warm, and the ring itself was a perfect fit for her delicate digit. He gave her the case for safekeeping. Tinsel leaned in, and they kissed passionately. There were sudden tears... Through her sudden tears, both she and Rick wouldn't want anything more. They finally had the opportunity to officially become a couple. That was only last year, and since that faithful life-changing night, Rick and Tinsel had decided that their wedding should be on October 9th, 2577, two years since the day they first met when he went to Planet Krypton and began his search for Samurai Goro. Ever since, ideas developed in Tinsel's mind in rapid succession. It was in the middle of March, and since it was seven months before the deadline, 
the pair thought it'd be a decent time to prepare for the festivities. To start, Rick thought aloud, I think we should plan on what we should wear for our upcoming union. She then recalled the murmur of Lily Flyer made Lily Flyer made while they were visiting Planet Giant during a week long vacation salvage mission on saving the universe from Don Genie and the three ancient raving de raving raving deities. If you've seen the short story The Power of the Falcon, you should know this. The young stern cadet of the Galactic Space Forces was wearing a delicate flowing white dress with pink roses across it. To them it almost looked like a petite wedding gown, and she coaxed there was something they can look forward to in the distant future. What do you think? This may be good for your upcoming matrimony, Tinsel. Yeah, but I'd much rather have it to be all silvery and lustrous. Tinsel turned it down like all other things. It should be as bright and silvery as a comet, as well as her own machine, the Silver Comet. And thus she wanted a medium-sized shimmering wedding dress with actual comets descending it. She actually had this vision as she was using acrylic paints on a bank, representing one of the most overrated princesses that the corrupt, simulating company Disney had concocted. I have no regrets on describing that. However, she knew that the princess of designing the process of designing it by a professional tailor would be rather expensive. They then went to the task force base and discussed their ideas with their closest friends. Upon hearing Tinsel's suggestions for her outfit, Lucy decided to get involved using her own earnings. Since she became a promising successor to the late Dr. Theodore Clash, but still worked as an F-Zero racer part-time, her pay has increased. I would love to pitch in, Tinsel. I always love shopping for fabulous clothes. Besides, this should give me some pointers if I ever want to do the same thing for Leon. <laughs> On top of that, Tinsel always hated wearing stilettos, as she and Rick know of her poor gait and balance. I hate stilettos. I never wear stilettos. Like Tinsel, I always wear, like, flat shoes. I, too, have poor balance. So she eventually decided that when they should that when they should go and search, a pair of dazzling six-and-a-half flat shoes matching her dress would suit her well. So what made you decide on your spiffy outfit, Wheeler? He responded with a smile. Well, I was thinking I could have a tuxedo, but rather a dark cerulean suit similar to the shades of the late Douglas J. Falcon's uniform in conjunction with my own machine, the Blue Falcon GT. He also thought he could use the Golden Falcon pen as a nice touch, even a long time with that same shade as his suit. Which is, as you've seen on the cover art, little spoilers there. That seems to be a great choice. Yeah, since it'll look suitable to Captain Falcon. Those are admirable choices, Rick and Tinsel, Jody said. Although, you must decide very carefully on picking clothes for the groomsmen and bridesmaids as well. She suggested the group for everyone who will be invited to assist and choose wisely of their spending and styles. What type of wedding are you planning on? I believe I co a common white wedding would do. She advised that their outfits must match with the type of the ceremony, and that each member must cooperate on their own costs for the outfits and Dr. Stewart suggested a personal tailor he had used with his former wife as well as his second one. The next day, Rick and Tinsel went with him and Lucy to work out with a tailor, which actually turned out to be Bert Lemming, a.k.a. Andy Summer. You're actually a tailor, Bert? He revealed his secret at the Falcon House. Of course. I have always worked with them ever since I started my new career as the head of the Falcon House. Staying formal and measuring for the perfect fit is very important for business. After an hour with some discussion, Bert measured Rick Tinsel and their friends within the task force, and it was agreed that each of the bridesmaids shall pay up to 450 space credits for their dresses, 
and 400 space credits maximum for the usher's suits. Even Bert had decided to spend his earnings on a fancy suit of his own. However, there was another challenge. The tailor asked how many people should attend. Before a decision would be made, the couple left and got to work. Wow, that was short. The oversaturated princess in the bank I was painting were references to Frozen. For my birthday just a few years ago, I received it, even though I was never a fan of the movie, which I'm not. Let It Go was... eh. I instantly had a vision of what Tinsel would look like if she were to be wed to Rick. And as you saw on the cover, this is what that said... this was that said bank. I should thank Barry Watterson for the suggestions on using a tailor as well. I never would have carried this chapter forward if it wasn't for that, so thank you. Our next challenge is to see how many invites should be chosen for the wedding as well as who they are and who would make it for the ceremony. So stay tuned for that. Until then, this is the Ekron Writer signing out.